tattoos to your rudy home My mama must be worried, worried, worried And you a kush, I ain't been panda Cause killer, I keep big and me not tanta I see my data, but mom and dad See you my kusudi I suck a deal in your body, need a rudy Hello, and welcome to episode four of Africanist Assemble. During the coronavirus pandemic, most of our ideas for conferences have been just dreams. So we decided to lean into that and ask our contributors what their dream conference would actually be. Here was the question. Let's pretend you have unlimited funds and could design an international conference on any topic you're passionate about. What would it look like? Where would it be? Whom would you invite to speak? And here are their answers. If I have unlimited funds to organize a conference, I would design a flexible world, a conference that is not saddled with a catalog of guidelines common to academic meetings, but one which aims to yield knowledge from all possible sources on African language and literature. The study of African language and literature has always accommodated interdisciplinary approach in knowledge production and sharing. I would design a meeting which would allow people from different disciplines and different spheres of life, but who have knowledge to share about what they do with language, how they manipulate language resources available to them for various ends, how they view what other people in the society do with language, how the society shapes the language practices, and what they know generally about African language and literature. I would ensure that the conference call is designed to attract the interest of different people within and outside the academia. As a way to make them listen and participate in knowledge sharing and production on African language and literature, I would deliberately extend invitation to the traditionally recognized custodians of African language and culture. I will also extend invitation to experts in African studies and linguistics. Hopefully, the presentations will provoke discussions from which experts could glean information on patterns of language usage and development in African language and literature. Information from such interactions may perhaps indicate future directions in Africanistic. If I have unlimited funds, I will design a meeting that will last a minimum of seven days, so as to give participants adequate time to make presentations, rather than the usual rush which has come to characterize academic meetings in recent times. I would prefer that everybody sits together during each presentation to interact and debate on issues. Rather than in parallel sessions, at least for the first five days. The last two days could present opportunities for parallel sessions in specialized areas before the general closing. I would design a conference that is flexible. A conference that would allow participants to choose any mode of presentation which best conveys their thoughts. The venue of the meeting would definitely be outside the academic institution. It would be somewhere in Africa, not in the urban areas, but in a place that is secure, where the silence of the vegetation may perhaps echo stories yet untold about Africa, her language, and literary arts. Rural development, marginal knowledge, and sustainability. I'm interested in several issues. As part of a generation of emerging African scholars, I am in tune with my background vis-a-vis -vis my Nigerian society and the global dynamics. I am also concerned about the questions of the future for my daughter and children in a globalized world. These questions have implications on my priorities and vision on several intersecting levels. Let's think of climate concerns, jobs, human rights, sexual orientation, marginalization, poverty, class-based inequality, mobility, amongst others. In this case, however, both theoretical knowledge and practical approaches towards solution realization are significant. 
in this solution-oriented conference, the need for an accessible language is important. In the context of Nigeria, the indigenous languages, as much as possible, should be adopted at the conference for adequate communication of knowledge and ideas. Due to the current limitation of knowledge-generating system that the Western-oriented languages offer, there is the situation of exclusion of the indigenous episteme that is transferred through languages. Hence, there is the need to extract the knowledge that is encoded in the thoughts and languages of the locals. Also, there is the need to decentralize the prioritized social categories conferred by Western education system, and in some cases, mere certification. For so long, we have carried ourselves as special and exclusive class at the expense of those outside the grid of Western knowledge production system. Therefore, the participants of the conference will be all inclusive, especially representing the voices of the marginalized. For example, let's think of a conference on climate change where Yoruba Hunters group are an integral part of the debate. This category will not just bring forward their generational knowledge of the environment, but also their practical experience in dealing with both wildlife, medicine, philosophy, and nature. I would love to hold an international conference on African verbal and visual arts at the Uganda National and Cultural Center in honor of the late poet and critic Okot Pabitek, who once headed this center and was one of the critical proponents of African studies in terms of recalibration. I would like to invite scholars globally who are involved in African studies, especially our own colleagues in the Africanistic Ensemble. And I would also love as keynote speakers renowned critics, artists, and scholars such as Wale Shoinka and Gugi Wadiyomo. Se avessi fondi limitati per organizzare una conferenza internazionale sarebbe una conferenza errante. Si muoverebbe tra i diversi mascani dei mapapasi di Zanzibar, ragazzi che tra la fine degli anni 80 e l'inizio dei 90 hanno creato un gruppo unico nel rispondere al progetto governativo di trasformare le isole in una destinazione turistica. Ningewa alika wote hao, vidiana kwa zamani wali okuana, kimbiliana barabarani kuwai wageni wao, popote wali okuepo. Akina Toshi, Akina Ocho, Akina Zayana, Akina Jumping, Akina Kibabu Nashebi, Nakina Muchi, i sopravvissuti. Vuote wadie nyumbani kutoka waliko per raccontare le loro storie di una città che a volte li vede e a volte se ne dimentica. Credo che il titolo della conferenza debba essere Magia all'Ova, perché questo titolo e quali sarebbero i temi? Qualcuno una volta mi disse che non vedeva cosa ci fosse di interessante nel capire le pratiche urbane dei mapapasi, che in fondo non erano che mseto. Un piatto tipico di Zanzibar, una zuppa di legumi e mais, una cacofonia di sapori forse? Un'armonia di sapori, credo sia una descrizione più vicina alla realtà. Ad ogni modo, disse, un gruppo eterogeneo nato perché non c'era lavoro, ma soprattutto dalla prospettiva di fare soldi facili e poter andare in Europa. Credo che i mapapassi fossero, e i pochi che restano, siano ancora amsteto, ma credo anche che ci sia molto di più nelle loro storie di vita, nella loro quotidianità, un costante negoziare lingue, spazi, ruoli e posti. Di fatto, è proprio nel loro essere mseto, nella capacità di inventarsi continuamente, di essere gruppo ma non troppo, che la loro unicità si costituisce, la stessa che ha permesso la nascita e la crescita del settore turistico sulle isole. Ma già l'ova, quindi, che però non sta ad indicare solo un aspetto di languaging che vorrei fosse esplorato. Indica anche un'attitudine, un prestarsi alla vita che comporta scelte, compromessi, a volte indicibili, dolorosi, a volte fortunati e sorridenti. Lontani dall'essere solo Wafania Biashara Ndogondogo, come il governo li definisce, le loro sono storie che raccontano di come Hawa Zanzibari Wenyewe Walito Ke Angambo, Quenda Mdini, Gugi Patiana Fassi Akasi, Ndio, la vile vile Gugi Patiana Fassi, Kama Wenyeji Katika Mdiwao. La Fassi nato che amuntu nafsiake, quindi impegno, dedizione, flessibilità, mobilità, determinazione, confidenza. Già l'uva si salutano tra loro e allo stesso tempo si insultano. Sapersi destreggiare nella vita è un'arte. 
Torniamo alla conferenza, sì, sarebbe una conferenza itinerante, come dicevo, due giorni, quattro panels, a Malindigas House, Forodani Garden, Africa House e Shangani Posta. Officini Cule, Cini Cule, Quegne Kona. L'organizzazione particolare dei panel dipende dal tipo di intervento che i nostri ospiti vogliono fare, ma vorrei che gli studiosi di Zanzibar fossero i discussant. Poi, arrivati a Shangani Posta, un round table, anzi un Kona table, dove Muci presiede ad un dibattito finale dopo un suo intervento, una keynote, in cui ha di cultura rifumana che nini cui di patia na fassi, ma che nini cui apapassi, zamane na leo, na cuisci, nella tanto violenta quanto astratta divisione tra mdini e mtani, con un governo che fa finta di non vedere, nega, ripulisce, spazza via letteralmente e poi, però, si ferma al cona, cupiga storico e nebenci pamoyanao, nemici non nemici, al punto che viene da chiedersi se anche loro a Kinamuchi non siano parte dell'immagine teatrale che, di cui lo Stato ha investito la propria isola. Vorrei che ci fosse una pubblicazione come risultato, un'edizione multimediale che raccolga i racconti di coloro che finalmente avranno uno spazio dove Mari, Faiao, Yana Pasua Sauti, Nao Wenyewe, Na Fassia Kukusanya, Maoni Yao, Kugi Wakilisha, Kirasmi e diventare famosi, come Freddie Mercury, come mi ha detto Munchi. Questa è la conferenza che organizzerei, inshallah. I would like to imagine a situation where I have been allocated unlimited funds in order to design an international conference on a topic of my choice, a topic that I'm passionate about. So what would that topic be? I've thought about the topic on the state and future of African literature, old and new voices in dialogue. This is a topic that I would like to invite various voices, both old and young, and bring them together in conversation. In terms of the format of this international conference, I would bring the writers in conversation with each other so that the conference takes the format of readings. And here I would invite the chosen authors to read texts from their written works. And the reason I would love to have this kind of format is because one of the pillars of the conference would be promoting reading culture as well as the creativity amongst these writers. And therefore, I would ask the writers to select their favorite texts and read from them. At the same time, in this conference, I would invite students to read their favorite texts from the said authors. Let me give an example or examples of whom I would invite to speak at this conference. I would invite writers ranging from different nationalities, from different countries. And here are just quick examples. Top on the list would be Ngugi Wathiongo, Yvonne Wall, Chimamanda Gozi Adichie, Zukiswawana, Wangui Wagoro, Sulaiman Adonia, Waris Diria, Okwiri Odwal, Lola Shoneyin, Mukoma Wanguge, and of course, I would wish to have Binyavanga Wainaina in that assembly of writers. In this conference, I would also invite critics and professors of African literature to deliberate and discuss the future of African literature in terms of new trends, in terms of developments, and how the new voices are tackling the contemporary challenges within the African continent. So at the end of it all, one of the things that I would desire to see is the entrenchment of reading cultures and how reading can help to promote African literature. And of course, this would also mean provoking students to read new authors and new texts that are being written about and in Africa. When thinking about organizing a conference, the question of funding is not the only thing that hinders people from attending, although of course it is an important one. I would like my utopian conference to take place outside of a closed room in an outdoor environment, so that is why I will add the factors unlimited health and time to my utopian resource list. But then further, usually no international conference goes by without the note that this and that person unfortunately could not make it because the visa was not granted or did not arrive in time. 
so we add freedom of movement to the list as well. Then I ask myself, what is the purpose of a conference? I think it should not only be to present our work in front of our colleagues, because they could just as well read the paper that we maybe write later or that we have already written. But the important thing is the discussions. I find the question, whom would you invite to speak, very interesting, because it implies that there are people who we normally do not invite to speak in conferences or just to attend them. And very often this is precisely the people that we do our research on or with. So one should try to create a more inclusive event. This could be by sharing thoughts, ideas and theories during a nice hike through a landscape. Then one can smell the leaves of trees. Or by preparing a meal together that everyone can smell and eat. It should take place nearby the locations which we speak about, so that we can invite the shopkeeper at the corner of the street, or the taxi driver, or the migrant who we did our research with to participate. So I would invite maybe a handful of academics and ask them to name one artist or activist that they would like to invite as well. And then the conference would take place in several sites that each party wants to talk about. It could be two days on a West African market to discuss with everyone there who would like to join the importance of sense in ritual making and its related theories. The next two days could be on a boat to share stories about the meaning of the sea for migrants and so on and so forth. But it is important that we also find other ways of output than just words and speech or books, because not everybody can relate to that. We have to find ways of expression, a part of that, that grant people access. This could be by performing a ritual together to honor the environment that hosts us. It could also be compiling a short movie that can be shared, or a podcast to which everyone can contribute who wants to. It can be a painting of a common vision that one can do together. It can be a meeting with a local YouTuber, maybe or a recipe that is shared and prepared together, or just all of that. And although it will be a real-life conference, there could be a chatting platform where one can send out invitations for a communal walk or a meal, or maybe just post questions or interventions. Because although I prefer real conversations, I know that not everybody does, and I think that we should experiment a little more with the tools that we have to make our knowledge production interesting and accessible to everyone. Berenike and Brady have most generously put an unlimited amount of funds at my disposal to use in conceptualizing, planning, and executing a conference of my choice. I get to decide the conference theme, the participants, the venue, everything. Their only demand is that I give a topic. The Kenyan in me is suspicious. When the deal is good, we are always warned. Think twice. I have thought three times and decided that I can share what in business they call a concept. Ikue, ikue, come what may. Kwani, the concept. Almost everyone doing African studies is dissatisfied with things as they are. There are many initiatives to find an opening or openings out of the present status quo, to recalibrate, reconfigure, reset, and so on. The conference I propose will remotely and in a very small way contribute to these efforts. It will comprehensively examine the contribution of a group of African intellectuals who came into their own in the second half of the 20th century. I refer to African intellectuals that can be described as Africanist on the basis of their engagement with the histories, cultures, politics, etc. of Africa. Thinking literary studies, we have big names from that generation with the showing cars, Achebe, Ngugi, Semben, all of them. But I want to move beyond the literary. So there are historians, there are philosophers. What were they saying? There are people from other disciplines. What were they doing? So the interest will be in coming to terms with this work and assessing it in context and then trying to see if there are ideas there that can be useful in moving African studies to a new, better space. So yes, Brady and Berenike, thank you very much for the funds which I take joyfully. I'm thinking of an intellectual history of Africa conference. Mit unbegrenzten Möglichkeiten finanzieller Natur würde ich eine aufeinander aufbauende Konferenzserie initiieren, um verschiedenen Teilnehmerkreisen, lokal und vom Anspruch her gesehen, gerecht zu werden, insbesondere den lokalen Partizipanten. 
Lange habe ich geschwankt, ob es eine Konferenz über die meiner Meinung nach vernachlässigten, aber wichtigen Themen in der Dekolonialisierungsdebatte sein sollte, nämlich die Dekolonialisierung der Religionen, hauptsächlich christliche und muslimische, oder zur Dekolonialisierung der immer noch fast ausschließlich europäischen national- oder offiziellen Sprachen. Sicherlich wären diese Themen eine sehr streitbare Diskussion und einer Konferenz wert. Letztendlich aber habe ich mich anders entschieden. Ich würde eine Serie von Regionalkonferenzen zum Thema Verschriftlichung bislang ganz oder großteils unverschriftlichten und damit nicht wissenschaftlich erforschten Sprachen anstoßen wollen, die in eine Endkonferenz münden soll. Zum einen sollte damit dem Verschwinden weiterer kleiner und mittelgroßer Sprachen entgegengewirkt werden und zum anderen sollte dadurch den Regierungen verschiedener afrikanischer Staaten und internationaler Organisationen wie der UNESCO die Bedeutung dieses kulturellen Schatzes mal wieder in den Blickpunkt gerückt werden. In den letzten Dekaden wurde einiges zum Themen wie Sprachtod und Minoritätensprachen geforscht und publiziert, aber die Auswirkungen dieser Forschungen und deren Anwendungen für die praktische Arbeit in Afrika sind gering. Gerade auch Wissenschaftler und Wissenschaftlerinnen aus den afrikanischen Ländern müssen sich verstärkt bewusst werden, dass hier riesige Mengen von Arbeit zu bewältigen sind. Finanzierenden Stellen einzelner Staaten und auch internationale Geldgeber müssen bewegt werden, ausreichende Gelder zur Förderung solcher Sprachstudien zur Verfügung zu stellen, damit zahlreiche Stellen an Universitäten und Forschungseinrichtungen in vielen afrikanischen Staaten und darüber hinaus zu schaffen. Daneben sollten auch kleine NGOs auf regionaler Ebene, die sich der Bewahrung von autochtoner Sprache oder Sprachen und damit verbunden der Kultur und den Kulturen ihrer Region verschrieben haben, gefördert werden, und zwar mit Geld und ausgebildeten Expertinnen und Experten. Ich glaube, dass es klar ist, dass diese Aufgabe nicht in einer Konferenz für ganz Afrika auf einmal zu bewältigen ist, sondern nur durch viele Konferenzen auf regionaler Ebene. Eingeladen werden als Akteure solcher Konferenzen Repräsentanten sowohl der Administration als auch der Wissenschaft und der eben genannten NGOs, neben von den jeweiligen Sprechergemeinschaften bestimmten lokalen Experten und Expertinnen. Nochmal zusammengefasst, zahlreiche regionale Treffen mit lokalen und überregionalen Konferenzteilnehmenden mit dem Ziel, der zunehmenden Marginalisierung vieler Sprachen entgegenzutreten, das wäre meine Idee für eine Konferenzserie. Ergebnisse dieser einzelnen Konferenzen könnten dann auch und vor allem, um eine größere Aufmerksamkeit bei potenziellen Geldgebern zu erlangen, in einer großen internationalen Konferenz an prominentem Ort auf dem afrikanischen Kontinent oder zum Beispiel auch an der UNO in New York abgehalten werden. Zu dieser Konferenz sollten dann als Redende Menschen mit einem hohen Bekanntheitsgrad und entsprechender Reputation als Zugpferde ausgewählt werden, die neben den von den jeweiligen Regionalkonferenzen abgesandten den Inhalt bestimmen. If I had an limited funds to organize an international conference, I think I'd be interested in the topic around knowledge production. As to where I would want to host this conference, I would select one of the many institutions in any country on the African continent. Now, there are numerous prominent scholars on African studies that I would invite to speak and I would invite a few, definitely. However, I would be keen to incorporate indigenous knowledge experts, including what has come to be known as human libraries. I found those people to be extremely important because they provide alternative forms of knowledge that have been left out of mainstream discourse. I have more and more become very skeptical about huge conferences and lots of funds because they basically often kill academic discussions rather than to spur them. And I've kind of come to prefer much more the smaller workshops, the colloquiums where one has time to listen to each other, where one kind of discusses each other's papers seriously and one is not rushed from one panel to the other in a big hotel venue, which for me stands very much for the kind of neoliberalization of the university and academia. So this being said, my general skepticism towards lots of funds and huge conferences and how funds and conferences probably <laughs> kill each other. 
I have one dream. There is one conference I think that I keep on imagining. And this is the 1962 conference that took place in Makerere, the conference of African writers of English expression, where at the time the big African authors who by now have become classics like Chinua Achebe, Christopher Okibo, Shoyinka, Ngugi as a young student, Louis Nkosi, Blok Modisane, they came together on the one hand with the aim to discuss pan-Africanist vision of the future. Well, remember, it's the 1960s, so independence is in the air and the future of the African continent is bright and they discuss it together. But on the other hand, as Ngugi also writes in his memoirs, for them, it's so much about discussing the craft of literature so seriously. I love that passion and this intensity of discussion really about literature and very much centered on their works. Well, and I think I dream of a re-edition of this conference and in the spirit of already at the time, Obiwali was somebody who was very critical about only in writers of English expression because he was criticizing the emphasis of the European languages. And I would take his criticism up. And this time I'm imagining a conference in Makerere that is the conference of African writers from all parts of the African continent coming with different languages. And of course, French and Portuguese and Arabic, apart from English, but also African languages. Of course, the conference would need interpreters, but I think that's all manageable. And I would give them then space to discuss their works, to read from their works, to also put theater plays on stage without turning the conference only into a festival. I would also bring in musicians because in music, African languages are on the one hand so poetically used and on the other hand, they are very much dominant there. And I think it would be very interesting to discuss them together with other poetry. I think of this conference as bringing established writers and younger writers together, including probably secondary school students, so that they can get some inspiration from the conference and probably also be encouraged to continue their writing. I would put an emphasis on writers from the African continent because they particularly have to struggle to get published, to find their audiences to justify why they actually engage in something that is writing or composing. And of course, we could allow, so to say, of course, also some writers from the diaspora, even in 1962, the prominent black boys, the diaspora poet Langston Hughes was there as well. But I would leave more space to African writers and authors from different parts of the continent to engage in serious discussions about the craft of literature in their literary writing, probably also to think about visions of the future and to give each other the courage to continue in what they have been doing. If I am to organize an international conference in a topic I'm so passionate about, with unlimited funds. It's first of all important for me to mention that the topic I am so passionate about is gender inequality, particularly in terms of women relating among themselves and how to cap this gender inequality that is widely spoken about. The first thing I would take into consideration is that I have got unlimited funds, yes, so I can do this the way I want. First, I want to consider the Africans where I feel like this is still a call for concern so far as gender inequality is concerned as compared to other countries. Maybe like I have lived in Germany and compared gender inequality to my country, I see some differences. Yes, so I will organize this in an African country because it's usually difficult for Africans to get a visa to attend conferences in European countries or maybe in the Americas. So I would do it in an African country where they relatively find it easier to get these visas to come there. I would really want to target more of Africans so that they could get to learn from other people how they have done so far 
what they have done so far to curb this gender inequality, what are the steps they have taken in terms of this. And secondly, this conference is going to be at least a one week conference because yes, I've got enough funds to do this and I need enough time for people to get to talk, for people to get to interact, for people to get to share their experiences. So doing a one week conference will not be a bad idea. Secondly, I will want to invite people from other parts of the world, people who have somehow successfully reduced the level of gender inequality in their own countries so they could come share their experiences. And coming from different parts of the world and inviting more people won't be an issue for me because I will be able to support their trips, I will be able to check about their visa processes and support it in terms for those who might not be able to do this and for those who need to be paid to come and take part in this conference i would have no issue to pay them to come from other countries and share their experiences with those african brothers and sisters who are still looking for steps to stop this gender inequality or to curb this gender inequality it's something that will not be completely stopped yes i must mention but still that should be taken towards it to make it better and if I've got this opportunity with unlimited funds this will be the best I can do to help the situation so far hi everyone just to say Nika first things first and uh, Brady I really like this question this time but also there's so much to say about it über diese Konferenz dass ich also versuchen werde mich ein bisschen kurz zu halten so, kan quasi ruketa na sipina isikloko for a conference. Ntinga ukubani funa a conference edibani sa isikloko ezivela kui natural science ne social science. Engondo ni ame conference ntinga ukuba izo vumela abantu ba kocha indo a one besi benzi sa e perspectives ezivela kumatala maninzi. Zum Beispiel singa teta ngezi ndo zeluimi, sifumana uluvo, uluve la kuitala le natural science. Silo dibanise nolo aziluetu, esinalo kui linguistics, ne African studies. Then habe ich gedacht, in return, das nächste isi kloko, si zaube la kui natural science. Umse kelo i topic ino kuba i experiment, i chemistry, o kanye physics. Es ist auch gut, dass ich mich nicht So, I think, long story short, I would like to have a conference where Bonke, Bapume, quick comfort zone sabo and confront things, von denen sie dachten, sie könnten sie nie verstehen. So wie bei mir irgendwie uh, Mathe in der Schule oder so. Malungane Speakers, hmm, mein Problem ist, dass Illist ist auch gut. So an die Gabinayo at this point. But send ma zi um du and die funo ukuba yenzi i keynote. Uza kubangu Karen Barad. And das beste is she will not be able to say no. Weil wir die Konferenz nämlich in Kapstadt machen, which is one of the most beautiful venues in the world. At least uh, that's what I think. Anyway. My ideal conference would be very easy to do. I would rent a bar in Cologne, situated quite centrally, where you would have bingo evenings on Tuesdays, and I would rent it from Monday to Friday. I'd invite diverse people, and I wouldn't invite so many people, just, let's say, maybe 20 contributions. There would be Africanists and linguists, there would be poets, musicians and activists and the topic of my conference would be contingency the unforeseeable it would be a small event you know not hundreds or even thousands of participants but maybe just a bunch of people in the evenings we would have bingo on the tuesday and then music on the other days and I would put personal emphasis on the social environment. And I would be very inspired by the Glasgow Rila Spring Schools organized by Bella Horevain and Alice and Phipps and Tawana Sitole. I think these would be the model for my ideal conference. I probably wouldn't spend all the money 
maybe a few flights, well, the rent for the bar. Of course, we'd need good food so people are happy. Yes, and of course, the salaries for the musicians, but not much more than this. Yeah, I'd go for a small event, but with deep, deep, deep social connections. That's it. Thank you.